What's up guys and good morning. We've got uh, Joel and Brandon here. The sun is shining. It's gonna be a super hot day. We're ready to get to work. We all gotta go put our sun hats on. And then uh, we're gonna fix the wall that we messed up last time we started framing. And I know all of the like veteran framers and carpenters are just like crawling in their skin and they think we're incompetent. And you're right, we're, we're doing a very poor job and we're taking a very long time, but that's okay. We're, we're trying to do it right, and that's what's important. So we're gonna fix the wall that we messed up, which is the wall with the two garage doors in it. And then we're gonna start working and try and get uh, some of the walls sheathed up. extremely excited that we have a little bit of new patio furniture up here. We actually ate dinner outside last night at our new table and chairs. This umbrella is perfect because it swivels and so when the shade moves, the umbrella moves. So Leo's out here on his little play mat in the shade, bouncing around. Today I'm hoping to build the fire pit that Brandon gave us and put that kind of over in this area with a couple chairs. And then we'll have a dining, a lounging, a playing, a barbecuing area. I love the space out here. It is so much fun to be out here working on the garage again and actually making some progress. It's like every time we put in a full day's work, the visual of the garage changes drastically and that's what I'm so excited about. Hopefully by the end of the day today we're going to have at least a couple of these walls sheathed. The only problem is we can only sheathe halfway up because we have to tie into the gable wall and we have to tie into the back of the trusses so we can't go all the way up but we can get like half of it sheathed and then after that um, probably gonna be, you know, excavation, sewer lines, working on that type of stuff. Maybe cutting out the concrete where we're gonna have to move the water line and the old sewer line, moving our yard hydrant and replacing it because it's broken. Just a lot of stuff. finished putting on the last piece of top plate we ran a string across our back wall and it's like 94 percent good at the end there's about three studs that are on a little bit of a dip and there's going to be a little bit of a gap between the truss and the wall right there that's no problem because the trusses on the outside over here they're spanning 29 feet so mm. for it to span a little like three foot section probably isn't going to matter. It's going to be tied all together with sheathing. So we're going to remove the double top plate off the front wall. I've marked every stud that needs to be cut. I'm going to spend two hours on the top of a ladder with a sawzall. <laughs> it's going to be a fun day. You got this. But at the end of the day, we're going to have nice straight walls that the trusses are going to sit on. What are trusses again? Uh, a truss is basically just like a big wooden triangle that makes up the roof. And instead of like having to build that triangle 30 feet in the air, they're just pre-built and they're structurally like 
guaranteed to like hold a certain amount of weight and they have your pitch on them which is perfect and all you do is build your walls and then you just use a crane or a forklift or something set the trusses on nail them in and then your roof is already built i know you didn't just say crane we are not having a crane right <laughs> um i'm gonna try my hardest to have a crane but if we can't get a crane then we're gonna have a forklift i'm gonna run the crane <laughs> no repeats from last year oh no Yeah, I need to figure out what that crane's doing down at Tim's house. Hey, hey. Oh, cool. Watch it. I got up here and I cut down all of these cripples and king studs with the sawzall, trying to take between an eighth and like three eighths of an inch off of each one so that we had a nice straight top plate when we were done. Isn't that like the width of the saw blade? Yep. Isn't that super difficult? Yeah, and it's wiggly. So they're just always crooked. And uh, <sighs> a lot of these are really crooked. So at least these three right here, we're gonna have to recut. It's gonna be better than it was if nothing else. And uh, cut these three, do the same thing to the other side, throw a new double top plate on it. Bob's your uncle. Hopefully we get to sheathing today. Halfway. Halfway? Nails. Living on a prayer? First top plate, huh? We're halfway there? Yeah. Just gotta remove the rest of those nails, nail that second piece of top plate down, and then redo the double top plate, and we'll be back to where we started. Your face looks so naked without a beard. Thank you. You look so young. Thank you. All right, well, the stress is a little bit elevated this morning. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out the issue with the top plate and some rainbowing. And in the meantime, I'm going to possibly get started setting up that fire pit that Brandon got for us while Leo is taking a little nap. I'm gonna let these guys just kind of simmer in their own emotions, as Joel would say. So many seeds to sow When the harvest comes in It will be Time to share what we have grown We were having the time of our lives When we started Everything was groovy But I'm noticing lately We've been half-hearted West Side Story I forgot how much I hate watching stuff like that. You like it? Yeah, it looks a lot better now. Good, get down. Trent! What? Don't do that. I was gonna do a double rear somersault. No, please don't. This is the balance beam. Stop! See in the gymnastics, they like do back handsprings on this. That's this not like funny. Pelvic rotational position. I was born to be a gymnast. Please be careful. You are freaking me out. <laughs> You're freaking me out, man. Yeah. The fire pit assembly is going nice and smooth, and while I've been working up there, these guys have just been crushing the day over here. Joel is nailing in sheathing. It's looking more and more like a garage by the minute. Look at that. So we have to go here to here. It's a real wall. We've got a couple of sheets up on this wall. Things are not going perfectly, but you know what? I'm, I'm happy with it. Things are going okay. Joel's actually gonna be putting up this next piece of sheathing all by himself, getting it up on the wall, nailing it on. And Brandon and I are gonna watch and cheer him on. Are you gonna film this part too? Yeah, of course we're gonna film this. We gotta show the people that you got this, dude. There 
There you go. Get it on there. Woo! Look at that. The wall behind me is looking spectacular. Leo is awake from his nap and I came down here and I have no idea what these guys are doing, but it doesn't look good. We're making a tightrope. Yeah, I see that, why? We're gonna walk the plank, ready? The balancing beam. Oh my goodness. Roll it towards you. Roll it towards me? Yeah, like that. Am I in the death zone over here? No, I don't think so. How close are you to flush? Now I'm gonna do the balance beam stuff. Here. What is going on with this piece of board? <laughs> Pizza board? Yes, yeah, seriously. Man, I'm hungry. It's not a straight flat board, I'll tell you that much. Oh, not it's, at all. It's just to hold the walls together. So if one falls, the other one falls too. Oh, great. What do you think? It's pretty dang close in 12 inches or whatever that torpedo is. Well, these don't vary that much in that direction, but. Good. But it's miserably daddy, daddy that you. The heat's getting to me. I'm miserable. It's hot out here. Um, we got half of that wall sheathed, and then uh, I was listening to Kevin, and Kevin was basically saying, don't put any sheathing on the walls until the walls are extremely braced. And so after we put that up, I was like, oh yeah, this past weekend there was wind advisories. Mm. There's 50 mile an hour winds. And if this was sheathed halfway up like it is right now without being braced, it probably would have blown over. Oh. So. A little sketchy, but uh, all I have to say is chicken. Chicken? chicken. What is Someone's that? Hungry. You want some chicken? No. I... He's You're... talking about pizza. I want He's pizza. About all sorts of food. You're playing I chicken? I want pizza. Pizza. So we are exercising our uh, redneck engineering here. We're trying to do our best to try and brace the top of all these walls together. What we really need to do is take like two 16 foot two by fours, nail them together, and then tie the bottom plate of each wall to the top plate of the opposing wall, and then K brace them all. But that's gonna require like 12 16 foot two by fours, or like 20 probably. And we don't even have any, we have a couple of these like I don't even think, this one might be 16 feet, but I don't think the rest of them are. So what I'm doing is bracing the top of each wall in the middle to the opposing, or to the wall perpen, perpendicular? Yeah, to the wall perpendicular, like next to it. So we're making one giant square here, and then we use two two by sixes to brace across the middle there. And if anybody remembers from geometry, triangle is the strongest shape. And so we got one triangle here. We're gonna have a triangle over there. We've got a little triangle here. So basically, this is a strong house and it's gonna be fine. Oh boy. That looks like a sight for sore eyes. You know, I don't do much building, but at least I feed you guys. Yeah, and you do a great job. <laughs> you do a great job of everything you do, and most people probably don't know this because they only see what happens on camera, and on camera, it looks like I do most of the work. But in reality, I don't do anything. <laughs> Allie does everything except for what I do on camera, Aww. so Allie's the real MVP. Thank you. Well, oh. These guys are exhausted. It is pretty hot out. They've been in the sun all day. I whipped up some pizza for everybody. We're gonna get some cold drinks out and relax on our beautiful new patio furniture. Look at this. Trent, how comfortable are you on this? I'm pretty comfortable. I like that chair better. Go for it. Ugh. I'm like, I need a nap. Are you struggling right now? Yeah, but, uh, it's just Have yourselves a very Merry Christmas.
Everyone except for Joel, since I guess he's full. He already ate lunch. <laughs> Joel already ate. <laughs> I wanted like two string cheeses and I got like a gourmet three quarters meal. <laughs> Joel came up to me and asked if we had any snacks because he forgot snacks today. So I was like, oh no, this kid's hungry. So I scoured our kitchen and gave him yogurt and string cheese and pulled out some fruit options and blueberry scones. I was like, what can I feed him? And now we have pizza as well. The whole time Joel was inside eating all of that food, we thought he was going to the bathroom. <laughs> so I was, I was on the way to the bathroom that I was like, hey, you got any snacks? She was like, let me, let me treat you. Let me, <laughs> let me show you something nice we got going on here. Treat yourself. Yeah, treat yourself. <laughs> All right, guys, it has been a long day. We've been working hard on the house and I've got quite a bit of pain and I'm really, really sore and I'm gonna be using Omax's CryoFreeze to knock out my pain. Today's video is sponsored by Omax. CryoFreeze CBD Extra Strength delivers an arctic blast of cooling relief to instantly ice out pain with a clinical dose of menthol, 500 milligrams of hemp CBD, and 10 natural pain relief ingredients to help support fast recovery and improve performance. CryoFreeze is actually a non-prescription triple action pain reliever. It blocks pain, it reduces inflammation, and it improves muscle and joint flexibility. So whether you're an athlete, a weekend warrior, or you're just somebody that has a lot of stiff joints, muscle pain, aches, anything like that. I know my father-in-law absolutely loves using this stuff on his back when he's been golfing too much. It is a absolute godsend. And it's actually super like mess free. You just roll it on, you let the uh, menthol do its job, you let the CBD do its job, and next thing you know, the pain is completely gone. So if you've been dealing with sore muscles or stiff joints, I highly recommend checking out CryoFreeze by Omax. And if you guys wanna do so, you can click the link in our description. And once you get there, you can actually use code Trent and Allie at checkout, and you'll get 20% off CryoFreeze and site-wide. Thanks again to Omax for sponsoring today's video. Now I'm gonna kick back and relax, and we'll see you guys in the morning. I've heard a story I've heard it said, I've come to believe that love is a bet. Sometimes you win it, sometimes you lose it, sometimes it calls you right in the blue. You wanna try it again? Come to my yeah. table, come, on. come to my bed, come on. go easy yeah. my All right, so today we do have a really, really big event happening, but it's gonna be happening a little bit later in the day. So during the day right now, we're getting some errands ran. We had to take the Toyota to a Toyota dealership so that something could get calibrated on the front end so that we can unload all of the overlanding gear. And now we're dropping off the truck to get its first oil change. And then we're going to get Joel and I both freshened up a little bit. This is a really exciting event. How excited are you? That's level 10 for Joel. That's as excited as he gets. I belong, I belong to you. I belong, I belong to you. Also, the child lock is broke on his back door, so you can't open it from the inside. Thank you. To let Allie out. Are you excited to bring Leo in there and watch us get haircuts for two hours? It's my favorite thing. <laughs> Better than shaving your own head, maybe? Probably. <laughs> a lot more even. 
That's awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Anytime. What do you think? Do you recognize Joel? I've got no hair. He's got no hair. Let's see you guys together. Joel looks super sharp. I think it looks awesome. Yeah. Cool. This looks super good. You have hair all over your face, but. Okay, so I've been kind of procrastinating on discussing what's actually happening today, and I think we've all just been kind of distracting ourselves from what is inevitably about to happen this afternoon. We have a little bit more time to kill before we have to head to the shop for a monumental moment. I told myself I'm not gonna cry today, and I'm gonna try to stick to that as much as possible. Um, we still have a couple hours, so I think we're gonna grab some food and then head to the shop. All right, so we just rolled up here to Mountain Made Vans and uh, we're basically here to send Pamela Vanderson on her way. Life is uh, this is uh, basically the last time I'll ever drive this van. Sad. End of an era. And me. Still, I'm in this game. But without my closest friend. Ooh. How are we doing? How are you? Doing well. Good to meet you. <laughs> yeah, nice to meet you as well. <laughs> How was your flight? It was good. Yeah. A little bumpy coming in. But... Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you. Oh, finally. nice to meet you. How are you? Doing well. Doing well. Oh my gosh, we are so many emotions today. This is amazing, yeah. and it's heartbreaking, yeah, and it's amazing. <laughs> Troy is here to pick up our van. It's happening. It's happening. <laughs> this day has been a long time coming, but uh, I would I would equate it to like maybe sending your kid to college, except for your kid's probably not coming back, so maybe it's worse than that. I don't know, it's, it's sad. Okay, well Trent is just giving Troy the rundown of everything with the van and how to uh, understand it and run it and everything, how to charge it if you don't get enough sun, with the batteries, the furnace, the water heater. <sighs> and it's going really well. Hopefully, um, I think Troy really likes it. Did you guys were great. No. Um, you have first right of refusal, if I ever decide to. Send her on her way. Thank I'll you. Let you guys know first. Thank okay. you. Um, I can't change the name. It has to be. Yeah. It has to be Pamela Vanderson. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I love it. That's awesome. That's Please, uh, well, I guess we'll talk to you soon. <sighs> well, this is heavy. Yeah. It's a. Uh, it's a, a shift in identity, almost yeah. is what it feels like, even though we don't like live in the van. It's like we always have had it, and like it's been there. And there was like this huge worry that we were gonna lose it when we left it in South America, and then we like got it back. It was just like this, it's like this family member yeah. that's been there, basically our whole relationship. Yeah. And now, uh, now it's gonna be gone. A little sad. Leo never really got to meet Pamela. Mm. Is that sad? It is sad. It's okay. It's okay to cry. It's wonderful to be able to give the gift of adventure to somebody else, and Troy, I know, is going to absolutely have a blast in Pamela Vanderson, and the fact that he's keeping her name is so special. And <laughs> Um, I'm grateful that it's going 
to him. Um, but it is really hard to let go, even though, like Trent said, we don't live in the van anymore. We haven't traveled in the van for a long time, but there's a lot of incredible memories all over the world, our whole relationship. Yeah. So just savoring the moment, I guess. what this means that uh, yeah. Pamela Vanderson is gone. Yeah. Because it's just like we've always been able to go back into the van. And like the second I step into the van, it just like floods back with all the memories of everything we did and everywhere we went and just everything. I, f I have all the feelings uh, when we're in there. And now that Troy is taking her... We'll probably never see her again. And even if we do, it'll be like, it's someone else's van now. So it's like, it's a little bit sad. And it is, it's the end of an era, mm -hmm. you know? It's the end of a chapter, but it is the end of an era. And even though we're gonna build out another van and like do some weekend trips here and there, we'll never really be like that. Never say never. We probably won't ever be uh, the van life couple that we like kind of started out as. Which is sad. I think you might surprise yourself because we both loved being in the van. Yeah. So we'll see. I guess you never know. Yeah. So we're, we're excited that Pamela is going to be going on a lot more adventures and Troy is going to have a lot of fun with her. And our new van will be cool because, you know, we'll be able to take Leo and show him what being on the road is like. And, you know, maybe we'll take like a trip to Alaska, not just like a weekend here and there. We'll do like some, yeah. some extended trips and and ship our van to Europe and take Frank and Lika to Europe. And, I was listening you know, on the way home like. about uh, Lagos, Nigeria. Not doing that. Sounds really cool. Not doing that. Never say never. Get off, <laughs> Frank, get out of here. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed coming along on this adventure. We did get some framing done, but mostly we, uh, we, we sold Pamela Vanderson. So it was a, a happy video, a sad video. It's bittersweet, but in the end, I think it's mostly just a little heartbreaking. I feel like we did a really poor job of filming everything that happened today because we were both pretty emotional and just um, unsure of how to talk about it all. Yeah. So I apologize for that, but um, I'm excited to share with you the next chapter. And this chapter has been unbelievable. And I know it's only going to get better from here. I don't know what it's going to look like, but I'm excited for it. Me too. And if you guys enjoyed coming along for this last chapter and for the next chapter, make sure you show us by giving us a big thumbs up on today's video. Consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. Thank you guys. We love you. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Adios. Chest.